Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and today I'm going to be playing in one of the Tier 10 Soviet heavy tanks, and unlike the others, this one, the ST2, as the name might suggest, has two 122mm calibre guns. If you fire both of these barrels at the same time, you can do the highest alpha damage on any heavy tank in the game with armour piercing rounds with 880 alpha damage combined between the two 122mm barrels. So in today's video I'm going to be talking all about RNG and how I really recommend that you shouldn't let it get the better of you. Now if you wonder what I'm doing turning round the double barrels of this ST2 and firing backwards, take a look at the speedometer, rewind the video and you can see that we actually went up for about 22 kilometers an hour, up momentarily to about 27, 28 there. It's no meme in itself firing both of the barrels of your double barrel tank backwards as you're trying to race to be able to get into position can allow you to be able to get there quicker than the opposite number in the form of the ST2 on the enemy team. So RNG in World of Tanks, it's probably one of the more, uh, dare I say, interesting things about the game but also definitely one of the most frustrating. If somebody was to come and play World of Tanks having played a game like CSGO or, or, or playing another first person shooter they would be very confused as to why their shots are just simply not going where they aim them. And that's of course because tanks have accuracy values and it's one of the good things and the bad things about the game. You can kind of make it so that you can balance out a vehicle to have higher alpha damage or to have really crazy auto loading capacity but if it doesn't have the accuracy to go along with it then it doesn't really mean as much however it can be one of the most frustrating things in in video gaming history almost when you've got that perfect shot lined up you're aiming pixel perfect at the enemy tank and then it goes wide or alternatively your armor just doesn't work or you don't load the gold and the enemy's armor works just absolutely perfectly yeah world of tanks can definitely be a cesspool of frustration when it comes to RNG and I'm definitely not immune to it. Uh, if any of you watch my streams you'll know that quite often uh, I just there's one too many bits of bad luck in a roll and you can feel absolutely cursed in the scenario. One of the most important things that you can do and as we're going to be seeing in this battle is to try and not let it get to you. Because, a lot like in the video that I published about a, a month ago or so on this channel, where I talked about getting mad inside World of Tanks, RNG is definitely one of those kind of things that will get you mad. And as the conclusion of that video, well, at least tried to suggest, that if you do get mad, then you end up, you're going to end up playing bad. So, so far in this game, I felt that, ugh, it just wasn't really going well for me. I advanced into position, the ST2 on the enemy team put great shots into the front of my tank. Every shot that I try to fire at the top of the ST2 apart from one single shell just doesn't seem to really work. And so I'm going to try and fix my RNG. Of course, what's one of the first things that you do? Well, pay. Pay to win, right? Load the gold shells. Load the expensive shots. You're never going to break even unless you're running a premium account by firing them, but at least you can kind of account for that terrible RNG, right? Now, I'm not suggesting that that is a solution, or at least it's not a solution that everybody's going to be able to achieve. But still, by just at least understanding why your shells have ricocheted, why your shells have bounced, and I recommend using fantastic websites like Tanks GG and the Armor Model, let me actually just show you quickly. So, I've got the ST2 along here, and if, for example, I'm questioning why I'm bouncing off the top of the vehicle, Go to Tanks GG, go to Full Tank List, find the vehicle in question, go to the 3D model, take a look on top, use the, the live, and you can see that, well, I only had a 50% chance to be able to go through him if he's not using his gun depression, but if he is using his gun depression, then my chance with my standard rounds drops down to 24. Of course, if I load the gold, it's 40% when he's using his gun depression. If he's not, it's up to 76%. But really, that is kind of just the, the pay-to-win way in World of Tanks, right? That's how it always has been love it or hate it. Now, it's not just a, I'm not trying to, this video isn't about just saying load the gold and then you're gonna have better RNG, right? Or at least you're gonna have more chance to be able to penetrate the enemy tank. It's more about knowing about why something didn't happen and then, ugh, darn artillery. 
trying to account for it and knowing when things are going to happen. And one of the, I think, probably some of the most frustrated players that I see in World of Tanks are players who just don't seem to understand that it wasn't really RNG in the first place. It was because they either had an inaccurate gun. It was because they didn't have enough penetration. It was because they were firing um, a high explosive anti-tank round through some spaced armor. Or it's because they didn't realize that if they were firing armor-piercing rounds, that they could have been able to overmatch a plate on the enemy's upper hull. There's a reason why the better players are more consistent in the game. But even the better players still have to deal with just those rolls of the dice. Your shells for 440 damage on this tank could do as low as 330, or alternatively they could do as much as 550. We can see that the only penetrating round that we put in so far this game against the ST2 rolled exceptionally high for 532. So I guess I had a little bit of fortune when I finally managed to penetrate the enemy tank, but we're rolling the dice constantly. We're rolling the dice whether we're going to hit the enemy tank, we're rolling the dice whether we're going to penetrate the enemy tank, and then we're rolling the dice to see how much damage we're going to do to the enemy vehicle. Now a lot of people might think when you talk about it like that, is the solution just to lower the RNG in World of Tanks? And while that's not an argument I'm going to be continuing in this video, look, we've been there, we've done that. We, we could talk about it for an entire hour about whether it would be good or whether it would be bad for the game. I think that having RNG, at least some of it, is important in World of Tanks. If your shells always went when you aimed them, it would feel like it was a bit of a formality. Then you wouldn't be able to balance out having some statistics of a tank stronger and some statistics of a tank weaker. Think Leopard 1, great at sniping. Object 430U on the other hand, the least accurate tier 10 medium tank, will not do so well at long range. Un unless of course you start to uh, think about Soviet bias, but will do very well at close range where it doesn't matter if you're inaccurate, right? High penetration tanks as well. They have an advantage, a clear advantage, and maybe then because they have higher penetration they can get away with having lower alpha damage or, or better DPM for example. And this was the moment of the game where I truly felt absolutely cursed. We missed the bat chat, we failed to be able to kill the tier 10 French auto-loading medium tank, and even though they're reversing at about 20 kilometers an hour, they put a pixel perfect shot into my lower plate. I was starting to feel very frustrated indeed. And I'm wondering if this push is kind of a bit down to my clouded judgement. Remember, if you get mad, then you're going to think just at what's directly in front of you. You're not going to perceive the whole picture. You're not going to be focusing on your map. It's very important to try and not let RNG troll you in that fashion. But remember, RNG. It can't all be bad, right? Over the long run, over a thousand shots, everybody's going to have the good ones and everybody's going to have the bad ones. And so, while in the first half of this battle, everything seems to have gone absolutely wrong, we were only up until we managed to kill the Object 261 at about 1,500 combined in the first eight minutes of this game. Let's see what we're able to achieve for the latter part of it. Clutch shot there into the top of the FV4005 turret. You're not going to be taking on me with that 183mm caliber gun. I'm going to try and make my 222mm work though against the other British tank destroyer. Talking about heavy tanks, as I nearly said there, this WZ-111-58 is making a beautiful pressure play here. By getting into that position, he's actually safe from all of the sniping tanks along the plateau that I'm aiming at here. I'm trying to see if I can maybe get an opportunity to blind fire the Leopard, the Badger, or the CS-63 in that position. He's also, by pressuring the cap circle, forcing them to leave that plateau and come after us. And you can see that I'm preparing the double as the FV comes around the corner and BAM! 942 damage. Double pen. Who's the FV-4005 now, right? That British Tier 10 tank destroyer subsequently getting penetrated by the self-propelled gun on our team. And wow, what a turn of events. From what was looking like an absolute awful round with terrible RNG, now the game seems to be going into my favor. And we hit the Leopard. Hopefully we're going to be able to get our following shot into the CS-63. And I believe they actually lost 300 hit points there trying to drive down the slope to quickly get back towards the cap circle as they're going to have to do because the wz 11 5 a is doing a tremendous job with trying to pressure them and take 
control of the enemy's base. I'm going to join them in the cap circle because I decided, well, they've got 7,000 hit points. I've seen stranger losses. And if we lose this position, then maybe all of their medium tanks can flank ground to be able to go and take our base. But oh dear. The WZ-1115A, I guess, feels very confident because they actually reversed out of the cap circle. The Badger fires a high explosive round to be able to interrupt me. I reverse because I feel confident that I'm going to hit the CS-63 at that kind of a distance. And oh dear, luckily for me, the Badger's armor piercing round fails to go through my tank. And the WZ-111-5A's greedy decision to not cap there seems to actually be paying off very well for me as I thought I put a double in to the griller at the end of the game but it was actually just a single we pick up our fifth kill in a game that definitely went from zero to a hundred here <laughs> probably with regards to RNG and also with our impact in the battle look RNG can be an incredibly frustrating thing it can honestly be something that gives you the battle on a platter and it can be something that jumps up and swipes it from you when you felt for certain that you had it in the bag. One thing I would recommend when it comes to RNG in World of Tanks and, and see if you do this, that you don't really notice when you're high rolling a penetration roll. You don't really notice when you're getting a lucky shot. You don't really notice when you've rolled higher than you should do and you actually managed to take out the enemy tank in one hit. Your brain seems to assume the best. But when you have those unlucky bounces, when you have those misses that you thought were truly going to be able to hit the enemy tank, and when you low roll a shell that doesn't manage to quite destroy the enemy vehicle, and then they go on to kill you, then you're going to be blaming RNG, and you might be even frothing at the mouth. And so if there's one thing that helps me deal with RNG in World of Tanks, it's to make sure that you're recognizing when you've been fortunate, because more often than not, it is definitely balancing out the times that you're not. So I was really surprised to get an ace tanker here, because for the majority of the battle, I was in a negative mindset where just luck wasn't in my favor. But towards the end, when it started to really turn on, it's no surprise that we managed to get 1,222 base experience as we picked up a succession of kills, and we were definitely in the thick of the fight. And this is where it dawned on me just how important it is to realize about RNG in World of Tanks, account for it, and just keep plodding forwards. And who knows how you're going to be rewarded. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that's it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what are your best ways of dealing with RNG that uh, just aren't dabbing the two key or playing overpowered tanks. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Sunday, it's time for the World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby. And seeing how the 60TP is going to be top of the tree tomorrow on the European server and also on the NA server, then I think there's no better time to showcase all of the Polish heavy tanks. So come along right now as I show why these heavy set, flexible Polish power punchers can turn the tide of the battle in their team's favor. So, yeah, uh, really looking forward to seeing all of you live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby. And also, a happy 4th of July to all of you lovely Americans out there. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.